What is up everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Tactical Gaming Journal. Today we are looking especially at Beyond the Wire and its King and Country update soon to come. Bringing the Engineer class to the game, a couple of new maps, and the Harlem Hellfighters. But real quick before we get into it I want to thank a handful of my viewers who very generously decided to support the channel directly by clicking the blue join button and joining the ranks of the Millsimp Minions. There's three tiers of membership for my channel, and within a few days, we have filled out all the ranks. Each rank has at least one person in it, and I appreciate the hell out of each and every one of you. If you also are interested in supporting me further, click the blue join button down below. So a special shout out for Cheerful Tunic, Notice Taylor, Mr. Me So Lonely, Crow Pat, Miha 8, Curtis, and the Military Simulation Gaming Channel. Given the extremes of trench warfare, engineering sections were often put to task to fortify and entrench positions across the battlefield. With hard cover and protection against enemy fire and the elements being a priority for the armies of World War I, these sections will be vital to any army looking to advance on the Western Front. This new unit will be able to place structures, defensive equipment, and various deployables to support their team. Whether the infantry needs an elevated firing position or secured rear position, these pioneers will create the strong foundation needed for the fight ahead. The engineer section on each team will be comprised of a three-man section tasked with reinforcing and fortifying positions across the battlefield to support the army. With several options of emplacement suiting different scenarios, the engineers will be busy creating strong bases for the infantry to strike from. Firstly, you have the NCO. The engineer NCO will have the ability to construct and fortify positions to help create strong defenses. These constructions improve as more effort is applied to building it making the structure more enclosed and fortified with each stage. The engineer NCO is able to build emplacements, not just place them. In addition to these constructions, the section leader will be responsible for placing deployable ammo depots to resupply general ammunition, as well as riflemen's ammo bags. Teams need to be wary as the depot will cause an explosion when it's destroyed. The NCO will also be able to place barbed wire, sandbags, and duckboards. The two remaining roles that make up the section will also be able to affect the battle around them with their own selection of deployables. Engineers have access to building barbed wire and sandbag defenses to further embedded vital firing position, as well as portable ladders to help gain access to elevated position. The sapper also has an access to a Bangalore torpedo, a long tube carried explosive that can be used for clearing barbed wire and destroying enemy emplacements. Of course, it's subject to change with testing, but it seems for now the Bangladores have got a 10 second fuse. So we have the man in charge, the NCO, the sapper, which gets a Bangladore torpedo, one ladder, and one duckboard, and finally, we have the builder. No different than his other two counterparts, however the builder has two barbed wire, two sandbags, and two duckboards. He is definitely the grunt of the group. Now before we get into this next bit and check out one of the new maps that's coming, I know some of you probably haven't seen this yet, so I wanted to mention it. Apparently Beyond the Wire soon will implement this thing where you'll be able to field multiple factions on one field. So say the Germans are on one side, Instead of fighting just the French or just the Americans, the French and the Americans or the French and the British can now team up. You could have a few squads of American soldiers and a few squads of French soldiers on the same team. Pretty cool stuff. I remember it mentioned a while back. I just wanted to make sure everybody knew what was up with that. It's pretty awesome stuff. Now on to the new map, Shalot. Operation 2 for King and Country will be bringing two new maps. The first being Shalot. An infamous battle from the Muse Argonne Offensive where the Harlem Hellfighters gained renown. Premiering the brand new sub-faction sitting under French command, Shalot will introduce the 369th Regiment to Beyond the Wire. Charging through the hills of Shalot shows the difficulties of assaulting such a position. Any advance must be well planned with elevated firing positions abound. The chalk line trenches will have to be utilized during the approach 
to ensure some level of safety before starting the attack. The rear lines of the Entente showed tents with a field kitchen as well as some benches and a piano brought in on the nearby railway. Shallow trench lines lead over the hill and down to the front line, providing safer routes of travel as well as secure positions for artillery and heavy machine gun crews to operate. No Man's Land is a crater-riddled field filled with water and fallen comrades. There are various strong points connecting makeshift trenches which can be used as a springboard to extend your footing in the area. Any remaining trees that stand have been scarred and angled askew from the blast of artillery shells. Overlooking the map is the ruined chapel, which provides the greatest elevation and vantage point. Located at the very center of the level, this position will be regularly contested as armies battle for the hilltop and chapel remains. Pushing on through no man's land reveals the more established lines of the German army. Defensive trenches and bunkers converge on the few remaining buildings that have been established as storage areas for ammunition and general equipment. Quick disclaimer, yes, I know I am butchering the map name. Seychelles? Seychelles? I don't know how to say it. Anyway. Now this update, Operation 2 for King and Country, was pushed back a couple weeks, but this was like a week ago, so shouldn't be too much longer. I would say within the month of April, we'll probably see this update come out. Now of course, Beyond the Wire's player numbers have dwindled, and hopefully this update can restore the player numbers we once saw when it first released. It's one heck of a game, and I know optimization has a lot to do with a lot of the people leaving, so hopefully the devs will find some time to optimize what they already have out. Because definitely of the three games, Squad, Postscriptum, and Beyond the Wire that are built on this squad framework, Beyond the Wire probably is the least optimized of the three. But that's completely natural as it is the newest one of the three. Anyway, I really hope the future is bright for Beyond the Wire. I think it is, regardless of the naysayers and the low pop numbers. Given time and development, I think Beyond the Wire will fare just fine. Now, however, some of you may not have seen this yet, but Tannenberg and Verdun, as we already know, one of the first World War I indie games, is getting a new expansion, The Italian Front. So I'm definitely going to do some content on that as it nears release. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope you're as excited for Beyond the Wire as I am. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss a video. I want to thank all my channel members again, the Millsent Minions. If you're new around here, don't forget to check out my Postscriptum Guides playlist. Even if you're a vet to the game, I guarantee you'll learn something. And we are still giving away Steam Keys. It's not Intruder anymore. In fact, I'm going to wait to announce exactly what game it is. It's definitely an interesting indie game. Maybe the next video I'll cover it, but just stay tuned. If you're interested in entering the Steam Key giveaway, all you got to do is like this video, subscribe to the channel, and join our little Discord channel. It's linked below. But most importantly, drop a comment on this video, and within your comment, leave your Discord name and number. That's going to be like your ticket stub. Alright guys, y'all be good to each other.